Hello there, it's Carrie Rhodes here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel and another card making video. In today's video, we are playing with the Tiny Friends stamp set for the last time. This is episode four of my April stamp set of the month series. And in today's card, the Tiny Friends are doing one of my favorite things, camping. So we're going to make a slimline card with a camping scene. Also, I have a huge giveaway. Lawn Fawn is sponsoring this video and have given me a $25 shopping spree to their shop to give to one of you. All you have to do is leave a comment on each of the videos in this series. If you missed any of the first three, I will link them for you below. And then next Monday, I will be announcing the winner. So make sure you have time to go back and watch all of those. And now we're going to jump into today's video and start making today's cute card. Okay, I'm starting with Tiny Friends and stamping out five images from this set along with the Happy Trail stamp set for the cute camper. I had to use it and then Love You S'more, another of my favorite camping stamp sets. So I'm going to ink these up with some Copic Friendly Black ink and stamp them on some white cardstock and then I will have most of the images that I need for today's card. You can see how cute these Tiny Friends are with this little camper. So if you already have this camper set, it's going to be perfect with the tiny friends. I have stamped out some extra trees and then I'm using my gel press to stamp my camper on so I can pick it up with my piece of paper and get the reverse image. Now um, this one didn't turn out as crisp as the one I did in last week's video but I wanted to show you how I fixed that so I'll show you that as I color. Make sure you clean off your gel press right away after doing that if you do this technique for reverse stamping. I'm also stamping out this um, grouping of logs with walnut ink from Lawn Fawn and then I'm going to go ahead and start Copic coloring all of the things. I'm going to show you most of them but not when there's things that are duplicated. So the little girl I'm coloring right now I also reverse stamped her using my gel press. It's the same as the little girl I'm coloring right here which these two are supposed to represent my two daughters. Hannah and Samantha. So I am coloring them to look like what they maybe would wear when we're camping. And then this one is me. I put a denim skirt on and a bright pink t-shirt. And <laughs> I just love coloring these to look like people I know. And of course, there's Toby. And if you want to see Toby, make sure you stay tuned to the very end of this video for my blooper reel. <laughs> All right, so now I'm coloring out the camper so it looks kind of silver or metal at the bottom. Um, I do have a camper. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I love to go camping. We do have a trailer, so I don't often call it camping anymore because people kind of yell at me and say it's not really camping. And so now I say I'm going RVing. So I am not ashamed to say that I love sleeping in a queen size bed and having a toilet on hand in the middle of the night that I don't have to go outside to get to. I, I'm i a camper girl. I love it. I love my RV. And we have the kind that you tow behind. So I am coloring this little car to pull the camper, although we pull our camper with a truck, but still it, it's representational. And now I'm coloring out the fire. Now the fire is the thing that is not to scale but I had to have it. You have to have a fire when you go camping and s'mores. So you'll see how I incorporate all these odd sized things into my card as we go. So here I'm coloring out the s'more and just giving the marshmallow a little bit of color so it looks toasted and yummy. And then I'll color out the chocolate as well to finish it off. And I stamped a bunch of extra ones um, to maybe put like on the inside of the card or whatnot. So here I am using a black liner pen to trace an image. Now, I am not good at this. If I was good at this, I would just draw and I wouldn't need rubber stamps. So my door is a little wonky. I thought about stamping the door um, and cutting it out and sticking it on top, but I just went for it. So that camper and the remaining people that I colored are supposed to be my best friend, Patty. Her and I often go camping together. And one of my favorite trips was a girls camping weekend. And my husband drove the camper up for us and left it there. And we camped in the middle of the week when it wasn't so busy. And so it was 
fun to just have the girls. That doesn't happen very often, but it was super fun. So now I'm taking some really dark green cardstock and cutting out some hills using the Lawn Fawn stamp set and then also some grass using this Trinity Stamps die set. It has a straight piece of grass, which is what I wanted. So now I can use these pieces to layer up and get the hills and whatnot that I want for my scene. I'm also using these trees that are the lift the flat trees. I'm going to cut them apart and you'll see how I do that in a moment. Now I'm taking my chipped sapphire distress oxide ink. Truth be told, this is the first time I've ever used this color. It's new to me and it was very exciting. I loved it. And it is a really good kind of almost nighttime sky, which is, you know, when you camp in the summer, it's like a really long time until it gets dark to make a fire. So sometimes with kids, you got to just start the fire. <laughs> it's not quite dark yet and that's what we're doing here. I am adding a little black soot to the edge to give it more of a nighttime feel and then I'm going to remove the frame from these trees and cut them apart so I can place them strategically how I want on my slimline card. Now everything die cut is going to get a little dusting of the black soot on the edge just to give it more of a nighttime feel feel. So I'm going to do this with this tiny little makeup style blending brush on all three of the trees. I really like this size of brush for doing small detail like um, edge work so to speak on my die cuts and so each of the three hill pieces are going to get this. Now this one has like that jaggedy edge where I cut the grass. I am going to end up cutting that off with my paper trimmer. I won't need that and I didn't want it to you know, accidentally peek out or anything like that. So I'll cut that off. And then only one of my pieces has the stitched part and I thought about redoing it so I didn't have the stitched part. But in the end, I just thought it's only gonna show in a few places, so it's gonna be fine. Now back to my night sky, I had spritzed this with water, picked up the excess with a paper towel and set it aside, but I wanted to give it more of a starry sky look, so I added a little splattering of white acrylic paint. Not too much because I didn't want it to look like snow, just a little bit for some stars starting to come out. And then I'm gluing all the pieces together and then the trees are going to go in between a layer so they're set back a little bit and will give me a nice little campground area. So I figured out where I wanted those and I trimmed some down because I did want to use the lift the flat part of these trees and I didn't want them to be too high up that I wouldn't be able to do that. So once I have them where I want, I'll stick them down with some glue and then I'm going to add a little backer to each of these trees so that I can put my um, surprise on the inside of the flap. So it will go like that. I don't my trees would not stick in place. I really had to play with them. Yeah, glue and more glue. All right, so under that flap right there, I'm gonna stick my first s'more. Now, I only colored out one of these, so I will go back and add another s'more to one of these trees and something else to the third one, so you'll see that at the end, but I only had one colored up at that time. I wasn't exactly sure what I wanted to do, but I knew that I might want some extra s'mores like for the inside of the cart or for these flaps, so I had them to color when I knew what I wanted to do. And then if you ever have extras, you can always stick them in with the package. And then next time you go to use that set, you'd already have the s'mores stamped out and ready to go. So now I laid out the trees where I wanted them, the stamped trees. And then I'll go ahead and glue those down into place and then trim off the excess of these larger trees in the foreground. And then my scene is set and ready for some more stamped images. Well, I guess I need to put on this grass first. So I popped that up with some foam tape so that it gave it a little bit of dimension there in the front of the card. But I like the depth of this with the different hills and there's different things going on behind each of those layers. And it just gives that like the look of the the depth of a forest. So now I'm just gonna lay out where I want all of these things to go, and then I can go back in and glue them. But laying them out first gives me an opportunity to rearrange things if they don't fit right. Sometimes I have too many stamped images, or sometimes like I really need to fill in a spot, and I kinda know that by doing this first. And I realized that largest flame was just too much. So there everything is attached, and now I'm gonna go in and add some high highlights with my white jelly roll pen to all of the cute stamped things. I think these tiny people are 
they're so darn cute and they're really easy to color because you don't have a lot of space to do shading so it's a lot of just one or two colors and I find that very satisfying you like you don't have to do a ton of work to make them cute they're just kind of like ready to go yeah so there they are all highlighted I even added some to the fire and um, the, do you think like the logs look weird because they're stamped solid? I kind of do. So I'm going to go back and fix that. But here is my second s'more. I'm going to tuck behind that tree. Now this one had the glue had really dried. So I just cut off the edge so it looked like it was tucked behind that opening when really it wasn't. And then for the third tree, I thought it'd be fun to do this plain marshmallow and stick that on the inside. This is also from that Love You S'more stamp set. So I'm giving it that toasty marshmallow look just by um, using like a stippling or dotting technique on the edges. I love how they look. They look like the perfect golden brown marshmallow. And by the way, my husband is like a professional marshmallow roaster. He is so good at it. I mean, they just get so golden brown and he never burns them, or almost never, and they're so melty on the inside. They're amazing. <laughs> so now I thought, why not put some faces on these s'mores? Because they're giant s'mores hiding inside of a tree, you know? So we might as well give them faces, but um, it's going to go really well with my saying for this card. So if you think it's weird that there are giant s'mores on the inside of these trees, you're right. It's weird, but... It's fun for me because this is like me and my best friend going camping with the kids and uh, just having fun. And I think it'll make a really good birthday card for her. So uh, Patty, if you're watching, just forget about this and kind of be surprised in July. And <laughs> maybe I'll put a fun surprise in there for you. So now I'm stamping out the sentiment that says everything is s'more fun with you. And I'm going to individually cut these out in kind of a bubble cut. So they, I don't know, have kind of a resemblance of marshmallow. Does that make any sense? It did in my head. A mar it's a marshmallow cut. That's what it is. So I'll cut those out and then stick those all on with some foam squares. And that will just pop them up off of this background because it's a quite busy card. I did not think that I was going to be able to fit the sentiment in there, honestly. But um, I just had to. It, it felt more um, fun if the sentiment was on the outside and went with like the flaps and the s'mores and the trees if it was on the outside versus on the inside. So now I thought, why don't I color the edge of these sayings with that kind of stippling technique that I did on the marshmallows? So I did, and I had tons of fun, and I love how it turned out. And maybe it doesn't make sense to everybody else that it looks like a toasted marshmallow like it does to me, but I helped it stand out at least. And when you open the flaps, it does look like the marshmallows. So I loved how it looked, and I, I think I'm going to color more marshmallows. I need some more marshmallow cards in my life. I love it. They're so yummy. <laughs> All right, so that is the pretty much it for the front of this card, but remember those logs? They looked weird. So I just drew in a few little lines and dots and dashes onto the logs to give them a little textural interest to finish that up, and that made me much happier. Looks much better for my giant fire. <laughs> it's a bonfire. All right, then I added a few more s'mores on the inside. I already had them stamped. I just had to color them. And that adds a little, you know, something repetitious for the inside, bringing the outside to the inside, which I love. So there is my card for episode four. There is one more thing I really wanted to do with this stamp set. So I might just surprise you on Monday when I reveal the winner of the $25 shopping spree with a little card making video. So watch out for that. I believe it's on May 3rd, whatever the Monday is. And um, you never know. I might sneak in a card making video with my announcement. So thank you so much for watching. If you missed the other episodes, they're linked for you below, as well as all the supplies I used. I'll be back again soon with another video just for you. Bye. And in, and in today's video, the tiny friends are doing one of my favorite things. They are camping. Say hi to Toby. Hi, Toby. Hi, Toby. Can you say hi? Can you sit? Can you sit down? No, he doesn't know what's happening. <laughs>